Mr. Galloway, I'm pleased to have you before the committee today. What I'm going to do is, is briefly summarize the evidence before I give you a chance to uh, give your, your sworn testimony. Uh, the Oil for Food program was used to support those who were favorable to Iraq. Former Iraqi Deputy Prime Minister Tariq Aziz and Iraqi Vice President Taha Yasin Ramadan confirmed this. I would think that you would admit that your efforts to oppose the sanction were well received by the regime. Uh, I know it's been quoted to you many, many times, but your, I would say, infamous uh, uh, statement to uh, uh, Saddam Hussein on January 21st, 1994, uh, where uh, you said to uh, uh, Saddam, Your Excellency, Mr. President, I greet you in the name of many thousands of people in Britain who stood against the tide and opposed the war and aggression against Iraq, continue to oppose the war by economic means, which is aimed to strangle the light out of the great people, life out of the great people of Iraq. You then went on to say he greets your name to the Palestinian people. Uh, you went on to note that I thought the President would appreciate knowing that even today, three years after the war, I still meet with families who are calling their newborn son Saddam. Uh, you went on, uh, ultimately, at the very end, to say, Sir, I salute your courage, your strength, your indefatigability. And I want you to know that we are with you, and I believe it was in Arabic, Hata al Nasser, Hata al Nasser, Hata al Quds, which means uh, until victory, until victory in Jerusalem. And I also would note that you have stated that you deeply regret uh, those comments and that the, uh, the comments were not aimed directly at Saddam, but they were aimed at the Iraqi people. Uh, in the fall of 1999, you headed a two-month London to Baghdad bus trip to gain support for lifting the, uh, the sanctions on Iraq. Uh, we have your name on Iraqi documents, some prepared before the fall of Saddam, some after that identify you as one of the allocation holders, that your allocations were then used by Fawaz Zerkat operations on operating under the name of Iridium Petroleum and the Middle East Advanced Semiconductor to actually lift the oil. We know, too, based on the statements of former Iraqi officials as well as some documents, and in the cases of Vladimir Zhirnovsky and Alexander Volshin, correspondence and documents, that allocation holders knew that surcharges or oil allocations were paid to Saddam Hussein, and that allocation holders were aware of this and responsible for the payments. We have also heard testimony regarding several documents retrieved from the Iraqi, oil mini oil ministry, Iraqi Ministry of Oil that demonstrate how Iraqi, uh, Iraq allocated oil to its friends and allies Exhibit 13, which you've seen, displayed a somewhat chart that demonstrated Vladimir Zhinovsky's dealing with the Machino import in Phase 11. That chart also lists contract M1104 with the Middle East Advanced Semiconductor. Uh, footnote 93, her testimony regarding a SOMO commercial invoice dated June 27, 2002, that shows the Middle East Semiconductor loaded 2,360,860 barrels of Iraqi crude oil pursuant to SOMO crude oil sales contract M1104. Exhibit 12, we heard testimony regarding correspondence from the executive director of SOMO to the Iraqi oil minister, providing details of contract M1104 and listing your name in parentheses next to Middle East Advanced Semiconductor and Fawaz Zurakat, who we know lifted the oil against statements of detainees, including former Vice President Ramadan, uh, confirmed that the name in parentheses, your name is the allocation holder. We heard testimony regarding contract M1104, which was signed on December 12, 2001, between SOMO and Fawaz Zerakat, President of Middle East Advanced Semiconductor. We heard testimony regarding SOMO commercial invoice uh, B13201 that shows Iridium Petroleum lifted 1,014,403 barrels of Iraqi oil pursuant to SOMO crude oil sales contract M923. Exhibit 45, for a testimony regarding a SOMO chart entitled Crude Oil Allocations during Phase 9 of the Memorandum of Understanding that indicates contract M923 was executed between SOMO and Mr. Farwez Zarakat slash George Galloway slash Iridium Petroleum. Exhibit 9, we also heard testimony regarding a memo from the Executive Director of SOMO to the Oil Minister requesting approval of contract M923. The document includes an official Ministry of Oil stamp dated 115-201 and provides details of contract M923 signed with Iridium Petroleum Company, Perens, for Wa Zurichet, Dash, Miriam's Appeal, indicating that the allocation recipient for contract M923 was for Wa Zurichet, Miriam's Appeal. Uh, Mr. Galloway, as I indicated in my opening statement, this is not a court of law. This committee has simply made available information obtained during the investigation from interviews of former Iraqi officials, as well as Iraqi documents that lay out how the oil for food program worked. How allocations were given to favored friends. Allocation holders made substantial commissions on those allocations to oil companies, what Ramadan called compensation for support. What another official, when talking about another allocation holder, said, of course they made a profit. That's the whole point. How surcharges and oil contracts were given back to the Saddam regime and were the responsibility of the allocation holder. 
The evidence then clearly identifies you as an allocation beneficiary to transfer the allocations to Fawaz Zerkat, who became chairman of your organization, Miriam's Appeal. Appeal. Senior Iraqi officials have confirmed that you, in fact, received oil allocations and that the documents that identify you as an allocation recipient are valid. If you can help provide any evidence that challenges the veracity of these documents or the statements of former Iraqi officials, we'd welcome that input. Mr. Galloway, you're appearing before the subcommittee without asserting any privilege or immunity. Indeed, your appearance before the subcommittee is entirely voluntary and on your own accord. No subpoena was issued to secure your appearance. You're appearing before the subcommittee concerning matters that do not arise out of the performance of any of your official duties as a member of the British Parliament, but instead concern actions taken by you in your capacity as a private citizen. Before we begin, pursuant to Rule 6, all witnesses who testify before the subcommittee are required to be sworn. This time, I would ask you to rise and please raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you're about to give before the subcommittee is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guide. We will be using a timing system today, uh, Mr. Galloway. Uh, we have 10 minutes for opening statement. If you need more time, we'll certainly accommodate that, and uh, you may proceed. Senator, I am not now, nor have I ever been, an oil trader, and neither has anyone on my behalf. I have never seen a barrel of oil, owned one, bought one, sold one, and neither has anybody on my behalf. Now, I know that standards have slipped over the last few years in Washington, but for a lawyer, you're remarkably cavalier with any idea of justice. I'm here today, but last week, you already found me guilty. You traduced my name around the world without ever having asked me a single question without ever having contacted me, without ever having written to me or telephoned me, without any contact with me whatsoever. And you call that justice. Now, I want to deal with the pages that relate to me in this dossier. And I want to point out areas where there are, let's be charitable and say, errors. And then I want to put this in the context that I believe it ought to be. On the very first page of your document about me, you assert that I have had many meetings with Saddam Hussein. This is false. I have had two meetings with Saddam Hussein, once in 1994, and once in August of 2002. By no stretch of the English language can that be described as many meetings with Saddam Hussein. As a matter of fact, I've met Saddam Hussein exactly the same number of times as Donald Rumsfeld met him. The difference is Donald Rumsfeld met him to sell him guns and to give him maps the better to target those guns. I met him to try and bring about an end to sanctions, suffering, and war, and on the second of the two occasions, I met him to try and persuade him to allow Dr. Hans Blix and the United Nations weapons inspectors back into the country. A rather better use of two meetings with Saddam Hussein than your own Secretary of State for Defense made of his. of the Hussein regime. This is false. I have brought along here a dossier, a dossier for all the members of your committee of statements by me as late, as early rather, as the 15th of March 1990, in which I condemn the Saddam Hussein dictatorship in the most withering terms a stance I have taken since around about the time you were an anti-Vietnam War demonstrator. I was an opponent of Saddam Hussein when British and American governments and businessmen were selling him guns and gas. I used to demonstrate outside the Iraqi embassy 
when British and American officials were going in and out doing commerce. You will see from the official parliamentary record, Hansard, from the 15th of March 1990 onwards, voluminous evidence that I have a rather better record of opposition to Saddam Hussein than you do and than any member of the British or American governments do. Now you say in this document, you quote a source, you have the gall to quote a source without ever having asked me if the allegation from the source was true, that I am, quote, the owner of a company which has made substantial profits from trading in Iraqi oil. Senator, I do not own any companies beyond a small company whose entire purpose, whose sole purpose, is to receive the income from my journalistic earnings from my employer, Associated Newspapers in London. I do not own a company that's been trading in Iraqi oil. And you had no business to carry a quotation, utterly unsubstantiated and false, implying otherwise. Now, you have nothing on me, Senator, except my name on lists of names from Iraq, many of which have been drawn up after the installation of your puppet government in Baghdad. If you had any of the letters against me that you had against Zhirinovsky and even Pasqua, they would have been up there in your slideshow for the members of your committee today. You have my name on lists provided to you by the Dofer inquiry, provided to him by the convicted bank robber and fraudster and con man Ahmed Chalabi, who many people to their credit in your country now realize played a decisive role in leading your country into the disaster in Iraq. There were 270 names on that list originally. That's somehow been filleted down to the names you chose to deal with in this committee. Some of the names on that committee included the former secretary to His Holiness Pope John Paul II, the former head of the African National Congress Presidential Office, and many others who had one defining characteristic in common. They all stood against the policy of sanctions and war which you vociferously prosecuted and which has led us to this disaster. You quote Mr. Taha Yassin Ramadan. Well, you have something on me. I've never met Mr. Taha Yassin Ramadan. Your subcommittee apparently has. But I do know that he's your prisoner. I believe he's in Abu Ghraib prison. I believe he's facing war crimes, charges, punishable by death. In these circumstances, knowing what the world knows about how you treat prisoners in Abu Ghraib prison, in Bagram Air Base, in Guantanamo Bay, including, him, I may say, British citizens being held in those places. I'm not sure how much credibility anyone would put on anything you managed to get from a prisoner in those circumstances. But you quote 13 words from Taha Yassin Ramadan, whom I have never met. If he said what he said, then he is wrong. And if you had any evidence that I had ever engaged in any actual oil transaction, if you had any evidence that anybody ever gave me any money, it would be before the public and before this commitment today. Because I agreed with your Mr. Greenblatt. Your Mr. Greenblatt was absolutely correct. What counts is not the names on the paper. What counts is where's the money, Senator? Who paid me hundreds of thousands of dollars of money? The answer to that is nobody. And if you had anybody who ever paid me a penny, you would have produced them here today. Now you refer at length to a company named in these documents as Eredio 
Petroleum. I say to you under oath here today, I have never heard of this company. I have never met anyone from this company. This company has never paid a penny to me. And I'll tell you something else. I can assure you that a radio petroleum has never paid a single penny to the Mariam Appeal campaign. Not a thin dime. I don't know who a radio petroleum are, but I dare say if you were to ask them, they would confirm that they have never met me or ever paid me a penny. Whilst I'm on that subject, who is this senior former regime official that you spoke to yesterday? Don't you think I have a right to know? Don't you think the committee and the public have a right to know who this senior former regime official you were quoting against me interviewed yesterday actually is? Now, one of the most serious of the mistakes that you have made in this set of documents is to be frank, such a schoolboy howler as to make a fool of the efforts that you have made. You assert on page 19, not once, but twice, that the document that you're referring to cover a different period in time from the documents covered by the Daily Telegraph, which were the subject of a libel action won by me in the High Court in England late last year. You state that the Daily Telegraph article cited documents from 1992 and 1993, whilst you are dealing with documents dating from 2001. Senator, the Daily Telegraph documents date identically to the documents that you are dealing with in your report here. None of the Daily Telegraph's documents dealt with a period of 1992-1993. I had never set foot in Iraq until late in 1993. Never in my life. There could possibly be no documents relating to oil for food matters in 1992-93, for the oil for food scheme did not exist at that time. And yet, you've allocated a full section of this document to claiming that your documents are from a different era to the Daily Telegraph documents when the opposite is true. Your documents and the Daily Telegraph documents deal with exactly the same period. But perhaps you were confusing the Daily Telegraph action with the Christian Science Monitor. The Christian Science Monitor did indeed publish on its front pages a set of allegations against me very similar to the ones that your committee have made. They did indeed rely on documents which started in 1992-1993. These documents were unmasked by the Christian Science Monitor themselves as forgery. Now, the neocon websites and newspapers in which you're such a hero, Senator, were all absolutely cock a hoop at the publication of the Christian Science Monitor documents. They were all absolutely convinced of their authenticity. They were all absolutely convinced that these documents showed me receiving $10 million from the Saddam Hussein regime. And they were all lies. In the same week as the Daily Telegraph published their documents against me, the Christian Science Monitor published theirs, which turned out to be forgeries, and the British newspaper Mail on Sunday purchased a third set of documents, which also on forensic examination turned out to be forgery. So there's nothing fanciful about this. Nothing at all fanciful about it. The existence of forged documents implicating me in commercial activities with the Iraqi regime is a proven fact. It's a proven fact that these forged documents existed. 
and were being circulated amongst right-wing newspapers in Baghdad and around the world in the immediate aftermath of the fall of the Iraqi regime. Now, Senator, I gave my heart and soul to oppose the policy that you promoted. I gave my political life's blood to try to stop the mass killing of Iraqis by the sanctions on Iraq, which killed a million Iraqis, most of them children. Most of them died before they even knew that they were Iraqis, but they died for no other reason other than that they were Iraqis, with the misfortune to be born at that time. I gave my heart and soul to stop you committing the disaster that you did commit in invading Iraq. And I told the world that your case for the war was a pack of lies. I told the world that Iraq, contrary to your claims, did not have weapons of mass destruction. I told the world, contrary to your claims, that Iraq had no connection to Al-Qaeda. I told the world, contrary to your claims, that Iraq had no connection to the atrocity on 9-11-2001. I told the world, contrary to your claims, that the Iraqi people would resist a British and American invasion of their country and that the fall of Baghdad would not be the beginning of the end, but merely the end of the beginning. Senator, in everything I said about Iraq, I turned out to be right and you turned out to be wrong. And 100,000 people have paid with their lives, 1,600 of them American soldiers sent to their deaths on a pack of lies, 15,000 of them wounded, many of them disabled forever on a pack of lies. If the world had listened to Kofi Annan, whose dismissal you demanded, if the world had listened to President Chirac, who you want to paint as some kind of corrupt traitor, if the world had listened to me and the anti-war movement in Britain, we would not be in the disaster that we are in today. Senator, this is the mother of all smoke screens. You are trying to divert attention from the crimes that you supported, from the theft of billions of dollars of Iraq's wealth. Have a look at the real oil for food scandal. Have a look at the 14 months you were in charge of Baghdad, the first 14 months, when $8.8 .8 billion of Iraq's wealth went missing on your watch. Have a look at Halliburton and the other American corporations that stole not only Iraq's money, but the money of the American taxpayer. Have a look at the oil that you didn't even meter, that you were shipping out of the country and selling, the proceeds of which went who knows where. Have a look at the $800 million you gave to American military commanders to hand out around the country without even counting it or weighing it. Have a look at the real scandal breaking in the newspapers today, revealed in the earlier testimony in this committee that the biggest sanctions busters were not me or Russian politicians or French politicians. The real sanctions busters were your own companies with the connivance of your own governments. Thank you, Mr. Galloway. Mr. Galloway, can we uh, start by talking about uh, Farwiz Azarkan? Do you know the individual? I know him very well. Uh, in fact, he was best man at his wedding. I was. And at some point in time, he became chair of Merriam's Appeal. Is that correct? He did, yeah. And can you tell me when that occurred? I think in late 2000 or early 2001. Uh, before Mr. Zurich was chair of Merriam's Appeal, who, who had that position? I was the founding chairman. Was there somebody in between uh, you and uh, Mr. Halford? And do you recall when he had that position? I don't. Uh, Mr. Uh, Zurich was a significant contributor to Merriam's Appeal. Is that correct? He was the second biggest contributor. The main contributor was Sheikh Zayed, the ruler of the United Arab Emirates, which you've glossed over in your report because it's slightly embarrassing to you. And the third major contributor was the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, which you've equally glossed over because it's embarrassing to you. And how but much both did of those individuals are your friends. How much did Mr. Zarakid contribute to Miriam's appeal? Roughly 375,000 English pounds. Is that about $600,000? 
American? Well, I don't know the conversion, but it's 375,000 sterling. Uh, if you can, uh, and he was, by the way, Mr. Mr. Zarkett was your representative, uh, designated representative for the activity of Mariam Appeal, is that correct? For the activities of the Mariam Appeal, yes. And when did he uh, get that position? I think late 2000. Late 2000. Uh, looking at uh, exhibit uh, nine, exhibit nine, and I think you have the books in front of you. Yeah. Uh, that uh, appears to be a, a document to the Ministry of Oil. Uh, testimony has indicated that the signature is an accurate signature. Do you have any reason to believe that document is false? Well, I've told you that I have never heard of a radio petroleum, and I've told you that the Mariam Appeal never received a single penny from a radio petroleum. Okay. So the information at the top of the page, if you've translated it accurately, is false. Have you heard of Middle East, uh, Middle East ASI company? Yes, that's Mr. Zurichat's company. Okay, can I uh, turn to Exhibit 12? Yep. And that purports to be, a uh, again, a uh, stamp, the seal of the Ministry of Oil, people of Iraq. And this uh, purports to be a, uh, shown the details of a contract signed with Middle East ASI company, George Galloway and uh, for Fawaz Zarkat. So the Middle East ASI is Mr. Zarkat's company? Middle East ASI is Mr. Zurichat's company. He may well have signed an oil contract. It had nothing to do with me. Uh, did you? He was uh, chair of Miriam's Appeal in, in 2000, so I, I take it you uh, knew him well. Uh, did he ever talk to you about his uh, d dealings in, uh, in oil with Iraq? He did better than that. He talked to everybody. He talked to every English journalist that came through Baghdad who he helped at our request to get the interviews and get the places that they wanted and needed to go. He was introduced to everyone as a major benefactor of the Mariam Appeal and as a businessman doing extensive business in Iraq and elsewhere in the Middle East. I'm asking you specifically, uh, in 2001, did you, were you aware that he was de doing oil deals with Iraq? I was aware that he was doing extensive business with Iraq. I did not know the details of it. It was not my business. So this is somebody who's the chairman of your committee that you know well and, you, and you, uh, you're not able to say that he was... Well, there's a lot of contributors I've just been checking to your... Uh, there's not, public not public many at that level, Mr. Galloway. Well, no, and let me assure you there are. I've checked your website. But there are lots of contributors to your political campaign no. funds. I don't suppose you ask any of them how they made the money they give you. Certainly not at $600,000 American. But let me again ask the question. I just, the record is clear. You need to be clear on the record that, that uh, you're not con contesting then the validity of document 12, exhibit 12, you're indicating that Mr. Uh, Zarkat could have had dealings with Iraq, but you're saying that at that point in time, you were not aware well, that he had oil dealings with first Iraq? First of all, I've only seen this document today, and I'm telling you that insofar as my name is in a parenthesis, the information in it is false. I have no reason to believe Mr. Zurichat's company did not do that particular oil deal, but this is your problem in this whole affair. There is nobody arguing that Mr. Zurichat's company did not do oil transactions and many other, much bigger, frankly, business contracts with Iraq. There's nobody contesting that Mr. Zurichat made substantial donations to our campaign against sanctions and war. My point is, you have accused me personally of enriching myself, of taking money from Iraq, and that is false and unjust. Mr. Galloway, do you recall an interview you had with the Jeremy Paxman on April 23rd of 2003? Well, we, have a, we have a copy of the transcript of that. I'd like to refresh your memory. Let me get a copy of that. As we get you a copy, I'm going to ask, uh, you were asked the question, talking about business dealings with Mr. Zarkot in Iraq, and at least the transcript that I have, and I'd like you to let me know if it's incorrect. Uh, your quote is, if you asked him about business in Iraq, and quote, well, I'm trying to reach him. This is in 2003. I'm trying to reach him to ask him if he's ever been involved in oil deals because I don't know the answer to that. So in 2003, you're saying you don't know the answer to whether he's involved in oil deals? Well, I told you in my previous two answers. I knew that Mr. Zurichat was heavily involved in business in Iraq and elsewhere, but that it was none of my business what particular transactions or business he was involved in anymore then you ask the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee when they donate money to you or pay for your trips to Israel 
where they got the money from. So, Mr. Galloway, you would have this committee believe that your designated representative from Miriam's Appeal becomes the chair of the Miriam's Appeal, was listed in, in Iraqi documents, is obviously doing business oil deals with Iraq, that you never had a conversation with him in 2001 or whether he was ever doing oil business with Iraq. No, I'm doing better than that. I'm telling you that I knew that he was doing a vast amount of business with Iraq, much bigger, as I said a couple of answers ago, than any oil business he did. In the airport, he was the representative of some of the world's biggest companies in Iraq. He was an extremely wealthy businessman doing very extensive business in Iraq. Not only did I know that, but I told everyone about it. I emblazoned it in our literature, on our website, precisely so that people like you could not later credibly question my bona fides in that regard. But so I did better than that. But I never asked him if he was trading in oil. I knew he was a big trader with Iraq, and I told everybody about it. So in 2003, when you said you didn't know whether he was doing oil deals, were you telling the truth at that time? Yes, I was. I've never known until the uh, Telegraph story appeared that he was alleged to be doing oil deals. But his oil deals are about one-tenth of the business that he did in Iraq. So I did better than telling people about his oil deals. I told them he was doing much, much more than that. So Exhibit 14, which reports to be a contract with Middle East Semiconductor, contract M1214. Middle East Semiconductor, again, is Mr. Zurichat's company. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any reason, any reason to believe that this document is, is false? Well, the parenthesis, if the parenthesis implies, as you've been arguing all morning, that it implies, that this was being signed for by Middle East Advanced Semiconductors in order to pass the money on to me, is false. Mr. Zurichat and Middle East Semiconductors or any other company have never given me any money. And if they had, you would have it up here on a board and in front of the committee here. I take it, Mr. Uh, Galloway, that uh, in regard to any surcharges paid to Saddam, and I think it's footnote 89, which refers to the, uh, the surcharge for the contract uh, focused on Miriam's appeal. You're saying that that document, first of all, any, any uh, contract between Iraq and Miriam's appeals is uh, false? Well, Senator, I'd gotten used to the allegation that I was taking money from Saddam Hussein. It's, it's, it's actually surreal to hear in this room this morning that I'm being accused of giving money to Saddam Hussein. This is utterly preposterous, utterly preposterous, that I gave $300,000 to Saddam Hussein. This is beyond the realms of the ridiculous. Now, the Mariam Appeals finances have been investigated by the Charity Commission on the order of Lord Goldsmith. You'll recall him, Senator. He's the Attorney General practically the only lawman in the world that thought your war with Iraq was legal, thought Britain joining your war with Iraq was legal. He ordered the Charity Commission to investigate the Mariam Appeal. Using their statutory powers, they recovered all money in and all money out ever received or spent by the Mariam Appeal. They found no impropriety, and I can assure you, they found no money from an oil contract from a radio petroleum, none whatsoever. And the, uh, the, the Commission uh, did not look at, at uh, these documents relating to this contract with Iraq. No, but they Iraq. looked better than that, Senator. I'm not asking you're, you better. Senator, I'm asking the question Senator, whether they listening. looked at but these not, documents. Senator, you're not listening to what I'm saying. They did better than that. They looked at every penny in and every penny out. And they did not find, I can assure you, any trace of a donation from a company called Radio Petroleum. Or, frankly, a donation from any company other than Mr. Zurichat's company. That's a fact. If I can get back to Mr. Zurichat one more time. Do you recall a time when he specifically, when you speak, had a conversation with him about oil dealings in Iraq? I've already answered that question. I can assure you, Mr. Zurichat never 
gave me a penny from an oil deal, from a cake deal, from a bread deal, or from any deal. He donated money to our campaign, which we publicly brandished on all of our literature, along with the other donors to the campaign. Again, Mr. Galloway, a simple question. I'm looking for a, either a yes or no. Do you, do you ever have a conversation with Mr. Zarkot where he informed you that he had oil dealings with Iraq? Yes or no? Not before this uh, Daily Telegraph report, no. <laughs> Senator Levin? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Galloway. Um, Mr. Galloway, could you take a look at the exhibit uh, number 12? Where your name is in parentheses after Mr. Zurichat's... Before Mr. Zurichat, if I'm looking at the right... I'm exhibit. sorry, I was going to finish my sentence, my question, though. Uh, my question was, where your name is in parentheses after Mr. Zurichat's companies. I apologize, sir. That's all right. Yeah. Um, now, that document, assuming it's an accurate translation of the document underneath it, um, would you say, you're not alleging here today that the document is a forgery, I gather. Well, I have no idea, Senator, if but, it's a forgery or but, not. But you're not alleging. But I'm saying that the information insofar as it relates to me is fake. I under, is wrong. It's wrong. But you're not alleging that the document... Well, I have no way of knowing, sir. That's fine. So you're not alleging. No, I have no way of, I have no way of knowing. This is it, is it fair I've to say, it. since you don't know, well, you're, you're not alleging? It would have been nice to have seen it before today. Not... Is it fair to say, though, that either because you've not seen it before or because, yeah, because otherwise you don't know, you're not alleging the documents are fake? Is that, I, I is that fair to I, say? I haven't had it in my possession long enough to form a, a view about that. Would you let the subcommittee know after you've had it in your possession long enough whether you consider the document a fake? Yeah, although there is, a, a, there, there is an academic quality about it all, uh, Senator Levin, okay. because you've already found me guilty okay. before, you, before you actually allowed me to come here and speak for myself. Well, in, in, in order to attempt to clear your name, would you let well, me... Well, uh, let's be clear about something. Now, let me finish my question. Let me be clear about that, first of all. Would you submit to the subcommittee, after you've had a chance to review this document, whether or not, in your judgment, it is a forgery? Will you do that? Well, if you'll give me the original. I mean, uh, this is not... Presumably, you wrote this English translation. Yes, and there's a, there's a copy underneath it of well, the... Uh, yes, there is a copy of a gray blur. If you'll, give me, if you'll give me the original... Copy of the original. If you'll give me the original in a decipherable way, then, of course... I'm, that, uh, that'd be fine. We would appreciate that. Yeah. Um, now... If, if at the bottom of this document, assuming it's, a, it's, assuming it's not a forgery for a moment, um, it says surcharge. Are we together? Yeah. yeah. As per the instructions of Your Excellency over the phone on 12-11-01 of not accepting the company's proposals unless they pay the debt incurred since phase eight. If in fact, if in fact, Mr. Zurichat's company paid a surcharge or a kickback to the Iraqi government um, in order to obtain an allocation of oil. Would that trouble you? Well, it turns out from your own testimony that practically everyone in the world, and especially the United States, was paying kickbacks. My question, it troubles me a great deal. Yeah. As you've heard well, from, my, from, my, yeah. Uh, from my statement today, I'm very much troubled that we have an oil company that was involved in this and we're going to go after that oil company. Now let me ask you. I've expressed my view about uh, Bay Oil, so now let me ask you about Mr. Zurichat's company. If, in fact, Mr. Zurichat's company paid a kickback to the Iraqi government in order to obtain this allocation, would you be troubled? That's my well, question. Yeah, that's a good question, and, and will, you well, I appreciate your, will you allow me to answer it I'd seriously, be happy to, yes. seriously, not in a yes or no fashion, because I could give you a glimpse. Providing you give us an answer, I'd be delighted to hear it. Here's my answer, and I hope it does delight you. I oppose the Oil for Food program with all my heart, not for the reasons that you are troubled by it, but because it was a program which saw the death, I'm talking about the death now, I'm talking about a mass grave of a million people, most of them children, in Iraq. The Oil for Food program gave 30 cents per day per Iraqi for the period of the Oil for Food program. 30 cents for all food, all medicine, all clothes, all schools, 
all hospitals, all public services. I believe that the United Nations had no right to starve Iraq's people because it had fallen out with Iraq's dictator. David Bonnier, your former colleague, Senator, whom I admired very much, a former chief whip here on the Hill, described the sanctions policy as infanticide masquerading as politics. Senator Coleman thinks that's funny, but I think it's the most profound description of that era that I have ever read. Infanticide masquerading as politics. So I opposed this program with all my heart. Not because Saddam was getting kickbacks from it, and I don't know when it's alleged these kickbacks started. Not because some individuals were getting rich doing business with Iraq under it, but because it was a murderous policy of killing huge numbers of Iraqis. That's what troubles me. That's what troubles me. Now, if you're asking me, that is Mr. Zurichat in some difficulty, like all the other companies, that it would appear paid kickbacks to the Iraqi regime? No doubt he is, although it would appear he's quite small beer compared to the American companies who were involved in the same thing. Now my question. That's what, I told you what troubles me. I'm and I've asking told, you, I, I'm asking told you, I've told would it you, trouble you? My question now, now that you've given us your, your again, your, your statement about your feeling about the oil for food program, um, my question is, would you be troubled if you knew that Mr. Zurichat paid a kickback in order to get an allocation of an oil contract? That's no, a very simple no. question. It's Mr. Zurichat's problem, not mine. It would not trouble you. It's Mr. Zurichat's problem, not mine. And so that if, an Ill, if a kickback, which was illegal under international, uh, now, now you may not agree with the UN, but that's the international community that you're attacking, yeah. which is fine. You're entitled to do that. You're entitled, and I'll defend your right to do it. But you're attacking a UN program, which is your right to do, which was aimed at providing humanitarian assistance to try to alleviate the problems that the sanctions provided, which is your right to do. But my question, which you are so far evading, is would you be troubled if that UN oil for food program was being circumvented by the kind of kickbacks which were taking place and being given to Saddam Hussein in order to obtain allocations under that program if Mr. Zurichat participated in that kickback scheme which violated the UN saying, you may not have agreed with it, but it violated the program. Would it trouble you if he violated that UN program in that way? That's my question. Senator, there are many things. I know other things trouble you, but can you just give us a straightforward answer? You've given us a long explanation of well, other things that trouble you, which is your right. Now I'm asking you whether that troubles you. Uh, it, it troubles me that it might put him in difficulty. It troubles me that it might now uh, lead to a prosecution of him. It troubles me that uh, this will be further smoke in the smoke screen. But I, Root and Branch, opposed this oil for food program. There's a lot of things you oppose that you don't believe should be circumvented in illegal ways, isn't that? Well, please, Senator, you supported the illegal attack on Iraq. Don't talk to me about illegal. Sorry about that. I didn't. But that's beside the point. Well, I'm that's, that's beside the point. Uh, you're, you're wrong I'm, on your I'm facts. Collect I'm collectively yeah. talking about the Senate, not you personally. Well, that's okay. That's you, all right. Let me go you, back to my question. I don't well, want to well, get involved. I don't want to get Senator. involved. In, in Why not? You want to talk about illegality? No. You launched an illegal war which has killed 100,000 people. Let's try. Could, you want me to be troubled about... No, I want, you to answer, I want you to answer questions which are fairly right. put and directly put right. to you. Right. Now I'll ask you one last question, two last questions. If, if Mr. Zurichat's contributions to Miriam's appeal came from the sale of oil or his share of a sale from oil, which he was able to obtain because he paid a kickback in violation of the UN program. Would that contribution trouble you? That's my question. Well, well, Senator, if you can't give a short I, answer, I, I'll, I'll give as short as I can, and I appreciate your fairness in this. Fundraising for political purposes is seldom pretty, as any American politician could testify. I took the view, I can be criticized for it. 
have been criticized for it, that I would fundraise from the kings of Arabia, whose political systems I have opposed all my life, in order to raise funds for what I thought was an emergency facing a disaster. And I did not ask Mr. Zurika which part of his profits from his entire business empire he was making donations to our That wasn't my from. question. My question well, was, would it, no, my question is, would it trouble you if you found that out? And no. It's okay. You're not going to answer it. It's clear okay. to me. I want to go to my next question. All right. All right. You're just simply not going to answer it. I will say, American politicians who find the source of money after it's given to them is troubling. And they find out something they didn't know afterwards frequently will, and hopefully I think always, but at least frequently, will return that money, will say they disagree with the source of the money. Hopefully all of us will do that, but whether or not we all live up to that standard. You clearly do not adopt that as a standard for contributions to Miriam's appeal. You're not going to look at the source of the money. You're just simply going to accept the money, and you've made that clear. I want to just ask you about Tariq Aziz. Yeah. Tariq Aziz. You, you've indicated you, you, uh, who you didn't talk to and who you did talk to. Did you have conversations with Tariq Aziz about the award of oil allocations? That's my question. Never. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. Just uh, one follow-up on the Tariq Aziz question. Uh, how often have, can you describe your relationship with Tariq Aziz? Friendly. How often did you uh, meet him? Many times. Do you have, can you give an estimate of that? No, many times. Uh, is it uh, uh, more, many more, times more than it, five? Yes, sir. More than ten? Is it like 15, around 15? Well, we're getting nearer, but I, I haven't ever counted it. But many times. I'm, and you have saying, I'm saying to you many times. And, and I'm saying to you I was friendly with him. And you described him as a very dear friend. Uh, I think you've quoted me as saying a dear, dear friend. I don't often use the double uh, adjective. But, uh, I was uh, looking into your heart on that. Eddie. But uh, <laughs> friend, I have no problem with. Tim, just before you go on, I do hope you'll avail yourself of this dossier that I have produced. I'm really speaking through you to Senator Levin. This is what I said about Saddam Hussein. We will uh, enter that into the record right. uh, uh, with, without objection. I have no further questions for the witness. You're excused, Mr. Galloway. Thank you very much.